In part A of this question, we are asked at what constant speed, symbolized by V, should the bar move to produce an 8.5 milliamp current in the resistor? The 8.5 milliamps is symbolized, of course, by I. Now, we know there is this concept known as motional EMF, and basically what it means is if you have a conducting bar that is moving through a magnetic field with a certain speed, and the magnetic field is perpendicular to the bar, very specialized set of circumstances, then there will be an induced EMF, or sometimes known as voltage. And that voltage, or EMF, is given by this equation right here. We have the induced EMF equaling the magnetic field times the length times the speed. Now, we want the speed, so what we'll do is solve this equation for speed. We will divide both sides of it by the quantity BL. The BLs cancel on the right-hand side. We can see, therefore, that the speed is the magnitude of the EMF divided by the magnetic field times the length. We were not given the induced EMF directly, but we know from Ohm's law that EMF, or voltage, is equal to the product of current and resistance. And indeed, we were given current and resistance values. So it will be convenient for us to take IR and substitute it in for the value of the EMF. So actually, we'll have the magnitude of IR divided by magnetic field times length, and that will give us our speed value. We can plug in all the known values. Again, the current was 8.5 milliamps, so make sure because it's in milliamps that you convert that into amps. To do that, you multiply by 10 to the minus 3. That will put the answer for current in amps, and you're going to multiply that by the resistance value. The resistance was given in the question as 9 ohms. That is a standard unit, so you don't need to convert that. So you'll just have 9 ohms. And then divide by B, the strength of the magnetic field. That was given in the question as 0.3 tesla, and then the length was 35 centimeters. So on the bottom, we'll have the 0.3 tesla, and then the 35 centimeters needs to be converted into meters, so to do that, just multiply by 10 to the minus 2. We'll pick up our calculators, we'll punch this in, and when we do that, we get about 0.73 is equal to the speed. You recall from Physics 1 that speed is measured in meters per second. So this would be the correct answer to the first part of Part A. There was a second part to Part A. If we clean up our workspace here, we know that we also have to predict the direction of the induced current. So we're going to have to rely on a new law here known as Lenz's law. Let's take a look at that. Lenz's law states that the current from the induced EMF creates a magnetic field with flux opposing the change in magnetic flux. It's a bit of a mouthful. Let's consider this change in magnetic flux first. We know that magnetic flux symbolized by Greek letter phi, is equal to magnetic field times area times the cosine of an angle. Now, what is important for us to notice is as this bar is dragged to the right, this area right here is actually going to increase because we're expanding how much space, basically, is available in that region. So we know that the area is increasing, which means that the magnetic flux is also increasing. Notice that because of these green X's that the magnetic field is directed into the page. That's actually what the green X's mean. We also see that it's indicated right here. So what we're saying is that again as the area increases the magnetic flux is increasing into the page. Lenz's law says, well, if the magnetic flux is increasing into the page, we better have an induced flux that's pointing out of the page. That's the nature of Lenz's law. So we have to create an induced magnetic field that is going out of the page. Keep that in mind. Let's come over here and draw a loop again. Remember, we want an induced magnetic field directed out of the page. And so we could symbolize that by putting in some green dots. Now you might remember there's a right-hand rule that's going to help us predict the direction of the current. Basically what you're going to do is grab the loop with your right hand and you want to make sure 
that your fingers are pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. So again, the magnetic field that's induced is out of the page. Your fingers should be pointing out of the page as well. Let's draw a right hand grasping the wire so that the fingers are directed out of the page. So there is one way of representing this. We have the right hand grasping the loop with the fingers curling out of the page. Notice that right there, the fingers are supposed to be curling out of the page. If you wanna pause the video and make fun of the drawing, feel free to do so. When we grasp the wire in this manner, our thumb, you'll notice, is pointing in this direction here. Now, the right-hand rule dictates that the thumb points in the direction of the current. So actually, that gives us the answer to the direction of the induced current. We can see that it's traveling around the loop in this manner because that's the way our thumb is pointing. Therefore, the direction of the induced current will indeed be counterclockwise. So this is the correct answer to the second half of part A. We can now head over to part B of the question, and that asks us to determine the rate that energy is delivered to the resistor. Let's remember that the rate at which energy is delivered is another phrase for power. And we remember that power is equal to current squared multiplied by resistance. Now remember the current was given to us in the question as 8.5 milliamps, Let's convert that into amps again by doing 8.5 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. Don't forget to square it, and then multiply that by the resistance value given as 9 ohms. Now when we punch this into our calculators, we will get 6.50 times 10 to the minus 4. The standard unit of power is watts. If we wish to convert that into milliwatts, we can do that. We know that 1 milliwatt is 10 to the minus 3 watts. So basically take your answer and multiply it by 1 over 10 to the minus 3, and you will get 0.65 milliwatts. So this would be the correct answer to part B of the question. And then finally on to part C, which is a conceptual type of question. It says, explain the origin of the energy being delivered to the resistor. So certainly if point 65 megawatts of power is being delivered to the resistor, there has to be a source of that power. It doesn't just show up out of thin air. Well, we recall that there was some external applied force that was pulling the bar to the right. It was indicated originally in the picture. And so we know that whenever a force is dragging something along by a certain distance, then there is work being done. So that actually is the source of the energy. We might say that the work done by the applied force in dragging the bar to the right is the source of the energy that is being delivered to the resistor. So this would be the correct answer for part C.